Does cooking on induction warp your carbon steel and cast iron cookware? Let's get into it. Hi, I'm Jed. This is Cook Culture. I use induction all the time. I do all types of cooking. Try to stick to medium to medium low cooking, but I definitely do go high sometimes. If I'm making a, a crepe or even a pancake, I'll cook a little higher. And I have never had a piece of car cast iron cookware or carbon steel cookware warp. So I really don't think that cast iron is in this conversation. Warping on cast iron, I, I don't think this is really what gets applied very often. I think people just talk about iron cookware. It seems from talking to people that I've questioned that they've, they've said this to me, it is carbon steel and it does happen on induction. So in my investigation of talking to lots and lots of people about this, what I've come to find is that I think, and I'm not sure, but I think it is induction cooktops. So these little cooking plates. And we have one and I, I've actually never used a, a piece of carbon steel on it. Um, we've used it for simmering liquids in a stainless steel pot, an induction capable stainless steel pot, so I have one to use. So what I'm going to do today is that I'm going to possibly sacrifice three pans. We're going to see. So I have a 10 inch uh, Dubai Mineral B. I have a made in 10 inch pan. And I also have a, I think it's an 11 inch uh, Movial uh, carbon steel. It is lighter than the Dubaye and the Maiden. I actually did a, a cooking test with these guys to see which one I liked. Um, I was never a big fan of the Maiden, so if I warp it, I'm not going to be that sad. But I will be sad if I was to do, you know, especially my Dubaye. This is a very, very trusty, awesome pan. And I have actually found a place uh, for this lighter pan of using um, the Movial. So I am going to see if the cooktop is going to warp these three different pans to try to get some sort of a, of a test control, I guess I'd call it. Um, but I really want to figure this out because I have people all the time that tell me that they're struggling using induction. What I'm going to do just to start with is I'm going to show you cranking these up, getting these hot on my cooktop. I use a Gen Air cooktop and this is an induction cooktop. I've never been able to make these warp to a point where I can spin these pans and I'm gonna show you that they don't spin. I can push the handle, they're not gonna spin. I'm gonna crank them up, let them stay hot, let them cool right down, and then again, test them. And then we're gonna do that on the induction cooktop. I'm going to put them to a medium heat, then to a high heat, leave them for a while, play around. You know, I don't think I need to cook anything them and the heat will do it. I don't think I need to, possibly put in water. Maybe if we're not getting a result, maybe I could put in some colder water and see if we get some thermal change. We'll, we'll see. Let's see what we can figure out. So here we go. Okay, so the beauty of the first part of this test is that I can do all three at the same time. Um, so just to show you, like try to spin, you know, I can move it around, but it's not like spinning. Like a pan that is warped just spins. So you just touch the handle and it just spins around. So that's really not warped at all and that guy also that guy too right so they're not spinning there's no warping to them i push them down and there's no there's no warping so what i'm going to do now is i will put them at about a seven that's like as high as i would really mostly ever cook um, and we'll leave them for i don't know 20 minutes, say, see what that, or actually let's go up to an eight. Let's, let's push it. Um, we'll go up to an eight and that's really hot. I wouldn't cook anything at, at eight. That's just going to burn anything that I'm going to put into these pans. Um, and so I'm going to leave them for like 20 minutes and let them cool right down. And then we'll do the same test. Okay. I've let those guys cranked. They're hot. <laughs> that's radiating. Okay, so all power off. So I will treat these pans that when they're hot, and this is like really hot, like this Dubaier handle here is 
hot. I don't usually let my pans get that hot. Um, but like I should be able to take a hot pan that's got food, you know, somewhat kind of cooked into it, that sort of thing, and put it under warm running water. And that should clean the pan, steam clean the pan. And that's a normal treatment for me. That's how I will kind of start cleaning my carbon steel cookware. So first off though, these pans have not twisted, warped whatsoever. They're exactly the same as I expected, no change. But under regular use, let's just make sure we're doing things correctly. Take it over to the warm, you know, I always usually run things under warm water. Right, so that's like, it's not cold, it's room temperature. So I'm plummeting the temperature of that pan. Right, so that is now warm, but not overly hot. Right, so that's normal use to me. Okay, so that, that pan is now warm but not hot. And it's exactly the same, right? So the made-in pan over to, again, warm water. Cool it down. You know, that would have steam cleaned whatever was in it. No warping, right? The pan is dead flat. Okay, the Movial. Okay, and the Movial. Again, like zero, zero movement on these pans. These pans are in perfect shape. So, did the testing on this, you know, normal to high quality induction built-in cooktop. I was able to heat them dramatically, put them under warm running water, treat them normally. You know, I didn't cook anything, of course, but I really don't think that would have made a, a, a difference. And they are in perfect shape. So as they were before, they didn't change whatsoever. So now we're going to have to one by one, of course, do it with the induction plate, but that's where hopefully the proof will be in the pudding. We'll see what, uh, what's going on with that. So now over to the plate. Okay, so we've got a cool pan here now. Uh, we're gonna turn the induction plate on. We're gonna heat it up. No, oh, we gotta put the put it on so that it recognizes it. Uh, and then we're gonna it goes up to eight. So we'll go that goes to a to a ten with boost. So we'll do like a six to be kind of equal. If eight is the highest, we'll do six. That's like a three quarter heat. And um, We'll, we'll get that guy on there. And, you know, I, I don't think we need to, well, maybe we'll do the thermal shock, we'll do the water shock, same thing um, to see, but we'll get this guy cranked on. We'll leave him here for maybe five minutes is probably really realistically all we need to do. I don't know if it's gonna continue heating any more than that after five minutes. So we'll leave this one on for five minutes and then we'll do the, the, the water cool, cool it down and see what result we have. Okay, so I've warmed this guy up pretty intensively. It's not really spinning on here. I'm gonna turn him up just a little bit more, see what I get from it. But it's like, that hasn't warped anything. Like it's, it's moving a little bit on there, but not really from a, a warp style. Like, when I, you know, a warp pen, when you hit the handle, it should just spin, like it's just, you know, something's wrong with the bottom and it's not sitting flat. There's not enough surface area on the bottom for it to, then the friction to stop it when you try to spin it. And that's what's happening here. Like there's a, a tiny bit of a movement, but you know, it's on a very slick surface. So, you know, there's, I can't really rock it per se. So something, I've cranked it right up now to its highest heat. 
Um, something that I'm gonna do that I know I could do on my cooktop, I'm gonna put in some room temperature water and just see if a little bit of thermal shock does anything to it. That should be fine. You should be able to do that to a pan like this. Okay. So that's gonna just kind of boil away. So I've dramatically dropped the temperature of that and you know, We'll just let it kind of cook the rest of that water off and, uh, and see what the outcome is there. So we'll give it a few minutes. So that has now cooked off all the water. You know, it's, it's a little bit of spin, but let me go and cool that pan under the, uh, the sink here and we'll see what we see. Okay, so I've cooled that pan right off as I did with the other one. And there's, there's a little bit of spinning on there, but it's hard, like we spun it on the cooktop on the induction range. So I'll put it back on there and let's see what it looks like spinning on the induction cooktop. Okay, so the Dubai pan. Yeah, you know. Yep. There might be actually. Yeah. Yeah, it's not it's nothing crazy. But when I push down on the handle and the base and I rock No, no, maybe not. Eh, it's hard to, like it, it feels like it's spinning a little bit more, but you know what I'm actually gonna do? I'm gonna let this cool further. It's still a little bit warm and this, this pan would have expanded a little bit more. So I'm gonna let this one cool a little bit before we move on to the next one. And we're gonna test this one for warping and spinning before we move to the next lighter pants. Okay, so this pan is now fully cool. And like when I, if you can hear that, there is a, there is a definitely a little warp. So it's like, is it a big deal to me on an induction top? No, like that's not a big deal. I don't, I don't care. We deal with a lot of cookware. I've had cookware back from people that are like, hey, it's warped, it's really bad pan, I don't want it anymore. And it's got this like, tiny minuscule little warp that you can like just slide a piece of paper under it. And that's fine because that's, that person feels that way and they paid a premium for their cookware and that's totally fine. I replace the cookware, it's not an issue. I'm just saying for me, I just like, I, I don't care. <laughs> that just doesn't matter. So somebody may say this is warped and it definitely, the process of putting on the induction cooktop and what, what I did has, has changed this pan. There's, there's no doubt, but the warping is minuscule, but, but it's there. You know, when I spin it, 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 the pan doesn't spin just equally anymore. It's kind of, kind of stuck in one spot and kind of spins around. So yeah, it has warped the pan, but to a very, very, very small degree. And this is one of the heaviest, if not the heaviest carbon steel pan on the market. Um, so now we'll try with some lighter cookware and see what happens. Okay, so the next two pans that we're gonna do are lighter than the Dubai A Mineral B. Uh, this was a made-in carbon steel, and this is the Moviel carbon steel that is the lightest, I'm pretty sure, when I measured them in a previous video. Um, but we'll go for the made-in and see what we can get going on. So, same thing, gonna get this nice and high. Just let it sit, crank up for you know five minutes or so. We'll get some water in there, we'll cool it off uh, in the sink, treat it the same way, try to be a little bit harsh to it, um, which is still within like the normal sort of conditions of, of cooking. Uh, many people overheat their pans all the time. That's part of why I bang on about nonstick cookware. If everyone treated their nonstick cookware as the manufacturers recommended, there really wouldn't be much of an issue with nonstick cookware. It would last for a long, 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 long time and it would work really, really well and that would be good. What happens is that people 
overheat their cookware with different recipes, which is really kind of normal and that's just to be expected. And carbon steel and cast iron can take that sort of normal cooking. You know, you want sometimes to, to crank it right up and do something that's a little bit harsh to it. And carbon steel, cast iron is resilient. If you destroy your nonstick seasoning, you can just redo it and continue on. With nonstick cookware, you're done. You, you kill your surface by overheating it and the pan is garbage and you're throwing it out. So, you know, I'm going down a different rabbit hole that I've talked about many times, but that's the, the big deal. So I, I don't feel here that I'm using this pan with cranking it up on this induction cooktop to, to a high degree and then I'm doing things outside of the normal cooking variables is what I'm saying. So uh, I'm gonna let this preheat for a few minutes and then we'll put it through the same paces. Okay, so you've had that cranked on there. It's, uh, it's pretty hot. This induction cooktop, this is a 1600 watt. It's not really that powerful. When I have these guys on my Gen Air cooktop, they get much hotter. I, I don't know what the wattage on there, but it's, it's even higher. So that's a funny thing. You think something that's even more powerful may warp and twist the, the pan, um, but that's kind of what it is. So I'm gonna get some water on there. It's also interesting where the the ring on the pan is, is cooking. So on an induction stove, it's important to have your, your induction, your, your induction capable pan on the right part of the pan, on sorry, part, part of the, the plate. And if it's sitting off, it's not going to engage and, and create the magnetic reaction. Um, but I'll get you a little close here and you can see where the, the ring is working here. On the Gen Air, it works evenly and when it simmers, it simmers across. You can't tell where the power is coming through. On this top, you definitely can. So I'll put a bit more water on here and show you kind of how it's, uh, it's coming through, which is quite interesting. So you can see there as it's coming kind of in a, in a ring and a little bit off. So that pan is centered on the marking on the, the induction top, but it's not centered in the pan, which is interesting. So it's off centered and the power in a ring is coming through. So it's, it's definitely de delivering intense energy to part of the pan and not to the other part of the pan, which is, uh, which is interesting. So we'll let that evaporate off and then cool the pan under water, just like we did before and see where we're at. Okay, so that's all evaporated off. When you take the pan off of the top, it turns off. So I'm gonna take this over and cool it under kind of, you know, medium temperature, room temperature water. And again, you know, not overly hot this pan. And it's gonna cool pretty quickly. Get this guy stop beeping at us. Okay. So cool the pan. You know, so far, this pan, this pan didn't really move whatsoever. So it spins, you know, maybe it's doing a tiny bit of the same thing. It might have changed. It's not rocking. Actually, you know what? It's got a tiny bit of a rock on one direction here. So from that side to that side, when I push down on it, it's got an ever so slight rock that it didn't have before. And when I spin the pan, it does the same thing as the Debyer pan, where it seems like it's kind of more uh, hitting the, the top here and kind of connecting with the top and spinning not just kind of squared it's not just spinning in, in one spot uh, it's kind of twisting itself around um, and moving so it's kind of it's, it's leaning to one end of the pan and catching and twisting the pan and moving the pan so there's been some change for sure it's changing just moving strangely but again, 
nothing that I would notice. Like if I was going to use this pan now, yeah, actually as it's cooling a little bit more. So there's a little bit of movement, there's some wiggle, tiny, tiny bit. For me, as I said, with the, the Dubai pan, that wouldn't be really noticeable to me. I really wouldn't care that much. It's not a massive issue. It's guess it's spinning just a little bit easier. So there, there definitely has been some movement. It has, it has warped the pan technically. Would I care about it? Personally, no. Um, and it would continue working on the induction. Like, so induction doesn't have to be absolutely 100% on the, on the top to work because your induction coil is actually underneath the glass. So you have a gap no matter what. You're not like you know, glass or, or a coil electric that you're directly onto the, the heat source. There is a gap between it and the magnet will transfer the energy from the coil under the induction cooktop into the cookware. Um, so I think we've had a bit of the same result, a tiny, tiny variance. It is doing something. Um, there is a difference, but so far nothing that would bother me, but it is interesting that we are getting some sort of result. So now we're going to do the same thing with the Moviel pan. So this is the definitely the, the thinnest gauge pan out of the three. This guy definitely is a much lighter pan and it is a two mil pan that technically I know the, that because that's how Mobile market this pan. Um, but we're gonna see if we can warp it. Uh, so on to the cooktop. I'm gonna crank that right up and now we're gonna wait and uh, give it some time to heat up. Okay, so we got the heat cranked up on there. Get some water on. Let it do its thing. Again, you know, this cooktop is not overly hot. Um, you know, so we're not killing this pan by cranking the heat way, way too high. Uh, it just doesn't really seem to have, you know, that massive, massive heat that like a 3000 watt unit would have. Uh, and strangely, what I've understood is that the high end unit, so in a, in a commercial environment, in a commercial kitchen, you can get induction plates and they can cost 500 bucks, 1,000 bucks. They're, you know, a really good quality, I assume, for that money, and I never hear that issue. I've talked to chefs that have them in their kitchen, and they're just like, yeah, that doesn't happen for us. So that's where it seems from talking to people, these cheap units are what the problem is. Uh, even though they're low power, comparatively, they seem to, I guess, seemingly the way that they're delivering the energy through the pan, again, this Mobile pan is doing exactly what the other two pans did. And you've got this kind of ring in the center and it's off center. It's like not even in the center of the pan. So it's on one side of the pan and it, it has, a, has a, a center that's not as hot as a, the outside. The pan is now fully drying up and I will get it off the heat and we'll get it over to the sink cool that down and cool the handle a little bit all right so that brings the temperature down on that really really quickly so we'll dry that up so i had the handle this is where the kind of the, the, the simmering was, was closer to the handle here. See what that, okay, so maybe a little bit. Yeah, it's doing a little bit of the same thing. So again, yeah, closer to the handle. So as I spin it, it doesn't just spin in one spot. It actually kind of grabs in one part of the pan and the whole pan moves away so it's yeah it's changed the shape of the bottom but again yeah so definitely from side to side here so as I go from from you know this side to this side on the surface there is a rock and more of a rock than in the other two pants so 
it has definitely changed the shape. But again, from you know, my expectations of a pan, I wouldn't care if I was gonna now grab this and throw this onto the cooktop and use it. It's gonna work perfectly fine. There is a, yeah, there's a lot more movement. Actually, as this pan is contracting and cooling, there is a lot more movement in this pan than there in the other two pans. So the lightness of this pan, in which I somewhat expected, um, has, has definitely changed the shape of this pan. And, you know, I would bring the camera in closer to show you, but I, I don't know if you're gonna actually even be able to see this. Okay, so the conclusion here. Definitely the induction cook plate changed the shape of all three of my pans. Did it do something to them that I'm upset with, that I have to go and try to like hammer them back into shape? No, I'm personally, I'm fine with it. If I was using an induction cook plate and that was the shape that it moved it to, I wouldn't be that worried about it. Maybe if I continued using it over time, like, you know, month, week, whatever, it would get worse and worse and worse, and that would be a bigger and bigger and bigger problem. Um, you know, especially with the temperature variance. You know, if I'm cooking at high temperature all the time, introducing, you know, colder or cool liquids and that thermal shock, that very possibly could grow and grow and grow and grow. So that definitely seems to be an issue. I, I think my, my hypothesis is being proven correct. Um, that that is causing the problem. I've used all three of these pans extensively on my Gen Air cooktop. I didn't change the shape of these guys. They've always been deadpan flat. And so introduction of the, of the induction plate, cheap induction plate is the problem. So I hope that helps if you're considering induction. Going with carbon steel cookware or even lighter weight stainless steel cookware is I would assume is gonna do exactly the same thing. You're going to misshape the metal. And so with induction going forward, what I would recommend is to invest in an induction you know, cooktop. If you, if you wanna go induction, be wary of a cheap induction plate, either buy a more expensive induction plate or time to look at replacing your entire cooktop. If you've got you know, electric coil or you've got gas and you want induction, you know, and maybe that was your foray into it. I don't know if the, the induction plate is really gonna give you the experience in what a, a real induction cooktop is going to do for you, uh, and it could damage your pans. So that seems to be the culprit. I'm not a big fan of induction plates because of this experiment, and I also find that the energy from what I've had from cheap ones has never been great. The experience, even up before now, was never awesome, and this definitely shows me it's not something to be used in, in our kitchen. So I hope this is useful. Any better experience, I'd love to hear about it. Please throw it below. I wanna continue this conversation and continue kind of peeling back all the layers of this issue so that people can try to buy the right things to get the right experience and use their cookware for the rest of their lives. So thanks so much, take care.